Today I'm going to talk about um, different time scales, as uh, my colleague Saskia Kunnel already has mentioned uh, before. Um, in fact, I'm going to try to promote here the use of the real-time time scale. So we have this long-term time scale that we are very familiar with, um, about weeks, days, uh, months, or even years. But we also have this real-time time scale, and I'm trying to make some arguments why we should use that as well in psychology. So in psychology, what have we studied so far? Um, well, we know a lot of things about how development goes on and on, um, but what we actually also try to find out is when do people change and how do they change? So focusing on different timescales is also important if we want to look at changes. And <coughs> um, so far we have uh, learned a lot by focusing on this long-term timescale. Development of children, at what ages uh, do children behave in certain ways, uh, but also what kind of intervention does work um, from the pre-test to the post-test, that's also always long-term time scale. However, the long-term time scale is intertwined or nested with the real-time time scale. And then if you make a picture of it, it looks more like this. So the performance in the real time is influenced by the long-term development of a person. But also what is happening now in the real time is influencing what is happening in long-term development, but also what is happening next on the real time. So this long-term focus that we use a lot in different studies has proven us a lot of insights and given us a lot of useful information. Um, for instance, in my own field, developmental psychology, um, we know a lot of, about motor milestones. Um, for example, uh, when this kid um, started to smile, if this was comparable to other children, whether this was average or below average. Um, in the case of a delay, we know when to have an intervention, so we can make sure that um, this child grows up being like an average kid. This is, by the way, my own kid. And, <laughs> uh, and you should be seeing him walking on the right, but unfortunately the movie didn't work here. But it looks something like this now, <laughs> because <laughs> it's just over one year. Um, but this is more long-term development and not what's happening in real time. We don't know how this boy who was sitting in September for the first time and walking in February, we do not know how that was possible. We only know when it was possible and maybe we have some footage, uh, well we do, uh, of what was going on in between. But we do not know how it happened. Um, so therefore we need to focus on this real time. And in this real time, um, it's much more complicated than we actually might think at first glance, because there's so much going on. Um, for example, I'm here as a presenter and I have this audience in front of me. Um, suppose you would act like this today, uh, at this moment, then I would start doubting myself. Um, I would maybe even uh, doing something silly just to t get your attention and hopefully you would react something like this. And then I would feel like, oh wow, I'm, 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 they're back. I have their attention and I can continue talking and, and, and doing my thing. So my performance in this real-time setting here in front of you is not only about my preparation and my um, abilities in presenting, but it's also the interaction with the audience and also the interaction with other materials, like this PowerPoint presentation. Because this, more, uh, this afternoon when we came here, um, I started my presentation or my PowerPoint and it didn't work because my movies were too big or something. So um, if that had happened while I was standing here, it would have caused enormous stress for me. Um, it would have resulted in maybe boredom with you, what's taking so long, etc. 
So even in real time, there's so much going on. And this is how we can um, show that. Um, what's happening now is the interaction between me as a presenter, you as the audience, and my presentation. And it's influencing each other every moment in time. So the figure on the right shows that. So what's happening now, the interaction that we all have together, um, makes what's happening in the next moment in time and what's happening in the next moment in time. So if we want to study behavior, uh, which is actually about activities, we want to study it also in the real time. And this is um, what we know already about changes. Um, from developmental psychology, a lot of studies have focused on how does change occur. And what we have seen in long-term development is that prior to a new level, there's a lot of variability going on. So if we have a cap can capture this variability, we can know more about these change processes. For instance, uh, my little boy, um, he was able to stand a couple of months ago, and he was also able to walk, but not independently. But sometimes he did. Most of the time he had to use the couch or the table um, to, to do his, his steps. But sometimes when he, he tried to go over from the couch to the, to the table, the distance was too far. So he did two independent steps. So that are the variable uh, line that you see there. The child is sometimes able to do something, but then again not. And this continues for a while until at a moment in time, it is stable. And now he's running, no, it's not running. Um, <laughs> he's walking around um, and he doesn't fall anymore. So it's quite stable. So this is an example uh, of one of my studies that I used and, and studied in real time. And that's this little boy who's doing a floating and sinking task with, um, with an adult. So we have this triangle between the adult, the child, and the task. And um, the adult is giving him 14 different objects, one by one, and each time the child is asked uh, to predict what is going to happen. Will it float or will it sink? And also to make an explanation. Um, why does it float or sink? Why do you think so? And then he has to return the object to the, to the adult um, the adult drops the object in the water tank and the child is uh, asked to explain again. So there are two explanations per object and there were 14 objects. And this is, uh, and we coded then the complexity of those explanations. And this is the line that we saw for this particular kit. So it go, starts off uh, at a level three for complexity, then it goes up for, to complexity level four, then it goes down again, then up, and a uh, moment later even higher up. Um, here it said, because you dropped it. It's a complexity level three, uh, it's just observing what is going on. Later on, the boy says, because it is so long, it's about a pencil. So the length of the pencil is why it floated. And this is already a level higher. It's more complex. There's one characteristic of the pencil. And here it says because it is round and a bit large. So that's two characteristics of the object. I think it's something like a ball here. Um, so throughout this real-time task session, we already saw a high variability because it goes up and down. And this is if we t take a look at group um, averages over time. So for the 14 different objects, um, we calculated the average complexity level. And what we saw was indeed, again, variability, but also an increase in complexity level. So 14 objects, two explanations per object, and in total, I think, 10 minutes of time. The children were four to six years old. So they were capable of improving their themselves in their explanations in a matter of 10 minutes. 
And then we took a, uh, also looked at the variability over time. Just again, those 10 minutes, those 14 objects. And what we now also noticed, what in those 10 minutes, there was a decrease in variability. So this is the percentage of change that, that occurred between each object or each explanation actually. And then we saw a clear decrease of variability. So what has this study uh, learned us? Well, we now know that variability is common. Um, we also know um, that we try to study um, behavior. So variability is a normal thing when we observe behavior. This variability is a precursor of change, even on the short-term timescale. So as my uh, colleague um, already announced earlier today, we don't have only have to look at the long-term timescale, but we also have to look at the real-time timescale, because that's where it happens. Change occurs in the real time. So my ideal um, research would combine these two um, timescales so that we not only know what the boy is doing today, but also what he's doing tomorrow and how that affects what he's doing the day after tomorrow. So my conclusion would be, let's also focus on the real time. Thank you. <laughs>